Hey everyone, Scapegoat Stephen, we're back with another Marvel Crisis Protocol report. So today, this is a recently filmed video of me playing Guardians versus my friend running S.H.I.E.L.D. So I quite like the idea of Guardians on the basis that they've got those winging it tokens, which means they can upgun some bigger models, but at the same time they can also run a really wide roster. And I know they're quite a meta pick at the moment, so I thought actually, you know, let's get some table time with them. I played against them quite a few times, but it'd just be nice to give them a try myself. So I went with Star Lord, Groot and Rocket as my core three guardians. And then with a big guy went with Hulkbuster and went with Winter Soldier. Uh, for a couple of reasons really. One he kind of counts as affiliation, obviously doesn't work for affiliation cards but he counts as affiliation for the purposes of making sure I'm affiliated. I've got a bunch of characters. Perhaps he's not as good in this roster, but where you've got a very wide roster, the more characters that could die, the more chance he's got for kicking off his uh, payback sort of ability where he then gets to shoot at the person that dazed or KO'd the opposing or your model even. Uh, sorry, so we're actually at 17 threat. Uh, portals overrun with Spider People and Montessi formula. So Portals is four. Uh, on the map uh, and that is just a go activate and potentially take uh, whereas montessi formula is a three sort of spell books down the middle on an e-map deployment so my tactics card deadly duo i don't think you can really leave leave without it on guardians if you're running rocket and Groot in the same list field dressing very useful uh, helios laser bombardment sorry the field dressing come back to that Works really well with Winter Soldier's ability to then shoot at someone. Because if you then bring them back, it's then another potential two shots from from Winter Soldier. Helios Laser Bombardment, because I was worried my opponent would bring a big guy. And Helios Laser's really good against a big guy. Uh, Indomitable, just generally an all-round useful card. And We Are Groot, a bit of healing. And we're going into Nick Fury Jr., Hawkeye, Rogue should be noted this is Rogue out of affiliation, not Rogue with the card that will then turn her into an affiliated card. Taskmaster and War Machine. And he bought Battlefield Medicine, which is kind of the, the shield version of one of the healing cards like Med Pack, Brace for Impact, Eye in the Sky, Patch Up, and Shield Mobile. So let's get into turn one. So this is our map, just so you're aware there is a spider portal behind that daily bugle stand. Apologies, I will get my home scenery painted and finished uh, before an event in a couple of weeks' time, actually. So I've got a, a time frame in which I need to get it done by. And obviously, a lot of my other painting will be, or a lot of my other battle reports take place on club scenery anyway. So that was Hawkeye going down centre, just behind that Montessi formula and spider portal. I'll deploy Rocket directly opposite, because who doesn't like two ranged five characters duking it out? Then towards the bottom of the screen, on the right, we've got War Machine. I place Groot next to Rocket, surprising absolutely no one. Then we get the Agents and Fury both get placed. Thanks to get placed during deployment at the same time. Uh, we just said move that that dumpster just to make it easier to put Fury down. I'm going to put Star Lord next to Groot, I'm deploying quite centrally here myself. Whereas the Shield player, obviously, because he's got those extra agents. That's Taskmaster next to War Machine, uh, Hulkbuster, uh, because of those agents. There goes Rogue in the middle and Bucky Barnes in the middle of my team. So Shield obviously have that extra extra model count and uh, good good scenario shenanigans with the agents, which we are about to see actually from the first activation. So the agents have to activate first. That's the way their rules work, and they are going to double move to the to the middle and pick up the Montessi formula that you can't see because it's behind that Fisk construction building. So the agents have got that. Fury's then going to move to there and take the spider portal, uh, which he does, but he is pushed. So I choose to pull him towards me because I want to kill Fury really quickly and early. Uh, he then uses his second movement, however, to tactically withdraw to a safer position out of line of sight behind that building. Star Lord's going to move next. He's going to double move up to the top of the screen where you can no longer see him because he's behind that bugle stand. And he is going to take that spider portal, thinking that actually there's not really anyone who's going to be able to get to him this turn. Rogue can't charge. Hawkeye, not really either. So Hawkeye does move and picks up the Montessi formula 
from the shield home objective. Groot's going to go next. He's just going to waddle forward, as Groot does, being on a small move. Make sure he's within range of that spider portal and book and just pick up the book. Taskmaster's going to go. Taskmaster's going to have to double move to get to this spider portal down the bottom. And fails on the roll to take the portal. So it's an energy roll. For your, you roll your energy defense and then have to get more successes than enemy healthy characters. If you roll a school, you get placed two. So I'll just place Taskmaster closer to me because I want to shoot Taskmaster then. If I can't have Fury, I'll have Taskmaster. I'm then going to activate Winter Soldier. It's going to move so that I can then get the portal behind Groot and then just throw some shots at Taskmaster. It does three damage and bleed in the first shot and then two damage on the rapid fire trigger. Pretty good start, really, on Taskmaster. Uh, got a bunch of old damage into him. Just to try and make sure that... I think we went for a turn one days, actually, here. Uh, just to try and cause some trouble. Give me a, a, some options for later in the game. So War Machine's going to go next. War Machine's going to double move and try and flip this portal. And he does. But, he'll, but he doesn't roll... The skull so he doesn't get moved unfortunately otherwise would have pulled him closer as well because that would have been fun but no it, he stays where he is and takes that portal i'm going to move rocket so that he's within range of shooting taskmaster I do debate whether or not i shoot the agents here but i move to there and shoot taskmaster uh, and unfortunately don't do anything like i'm quite surprised i would have expected rocket to have at least chipped that last point of damage off of taskmaster and then I could have done something else with Hulkbuster. Never mind. Uh, Rogue's just going to double move and put herself in a position for next turn where she's going to be able to charge and do rogue things like punch people and throw buildings around. So Hulkbuster's going to go next. Again, what I'd hoped here was that we already would have dazed Taskmaster and then Hulkbuster just uh, pushes War Machine perhaps off that objective a little bit, but never mind. What we do is we just move a little bit because we want to force Rogue to come as close as possible to us. So we just move tiny bits of there, get within our range three of Taskmaster and use the heavy repulsor blast and daze Taskmaster. So I'm quite happy with that as a turn one, to be perfectly honest. I have gone down a few points. My opponent scores two portals and two Montesi formula. I score two portals and one Montesi formula. So it's currently three to the Guardians and four to shield. So yeah, just confirmation here. Three points to Guardians of the Galaxy and four points to shield. Early lead, probably going to be obviously because of those agents getting able to get into and grab that central book. Now it's kind of going to become a game of attrition versus killing. So it's can I kill enough of my opponent very quickly? Because it's something Guardians do very well. They kill. They just kill, they kill, they kill, they kill, as long as they focus on the objective while they're going. Problem is my opponent does have priority, and Rogue does now have two power to be able to charge. So let's see how turn two goes. So to no one's surprise, Rogue will charge this turn into Hulkbuster. Now Hulkbuster will then spend his one power to reduce damage by one. And this is something he has to preemptively do, you can't do it afterwards. So just please bear that in mind if you are running Hulkbuster. You do have to play this before the enemy starts rolling dice. So it's going to move there. And Rogue's just going to energy strike me. And I take two. Uh, I think there's a slight mess up here, actually. My apologies with dice. I think I re-roll a crit or something with a, with a wing in it token. But it's my first time using Guardians. So apologies if that's wrong. It might be right. And I might have just got myself confused uh, for no reason. She's then going to absorbing strike me again, and I'm going to reduce damage again. Take three damage that time. Uh, mutant absorption on Hulkbuster then for that extra. Uh, removes three power. Just again reduces the ability for Hulkbuster to then retaliate effectively. Then looks at being within two of this great big size four building behind her. So she picks it up. It was me thinking it's going straight at Hulkbuster. Nope, goes a Bucky. And uh, it uh, does three damage. So, you know, it's like half a Bucky's health in one hit from a building. Didn't dodge particularly well. So Groot is going to go next. Groot is in range 
already of Rogue. So he doesn't have to move. And the reason Groot's going to go is because I want to build energy to be able to do the Deadly Duo card. So I do debate going with Rocket and using Deadly Duo and then realise Groot doesn't have the power. I do debate, do I use the beam from the Montesi formula book that Groot has? In the end, I decide, let's just let's just hit Rogue. Let's generate myself some energy. I can probably daze Rogue this turn, I think. Let's give it a go. So Groot's first attack into Rogue when we finally decide we're going to do it is, is actually quite ineffective, unfortunately. He rolls pretty poorly. He uh, My opponent rolls decently on defense and I get zero damage. So I have to do a second attack and score two damage, which I believe is then just enough for me as long as Rocket lives, which you probably should do. Uh, I should be able to get off a deadly duo. So my opponent is eyeing up Bucky here. He needs to get rid of Bucky before he starts dazing my other models, before I then start just getting free attacks all over the place. Now, obviously my opponent plays shield, so he's in intimately familiar with how Bucky works. So he's going to activate Fury and Agents. The Agents are going to go. They are going to eye up their energy beam from the Montesi formula book and see that I've got three characters all bunched up like an idiot. So he's going to do no damage, thankfully, to Bucky. Then he's going to do three damage to Groot. And finally, when he shoots into Rocket, uh, Groot steps in the way or... Rocket forces him in the way, depending on how you want to consider that rules interaction, and just does another damage to Groot. So Groot's basically taken four, and Bucky and Rocket have taken nothing. Uh, Fury is going to move forward and uh, use lead from the front into Winter Soldier, does a single points of damage, and then the agents are going to pistol Winter Soldier and do no damage. I've got a feeling at this point Bucky is on one health. I can't remember. It's either one or two. I think it's one, actually, because I've taken the five, haven't I? Or Sorry, I've taken the three, and then a couple of ones here and there. So I think he's got one health left. So he's very close to death. Uh, I'm going to do, uh, do Rocket next. And to no one's surprise, I'm going to Deadly Duo. I'm going to Deadly Duo Rogue. I'm going to Deadly Duo the Agents. I'm going to Deadly Duo Fury. Because the Agents got a book. I don't like Rogue, and I don't like Fury. So, unfortunately, Rocket clearly put some dud energy packs in his gun. And he does one damage to Rogue. He does one of two health damage to the agents. A little bit frustrating. And he does one damage to Fury. So, looking at this. Okay, right. I kind of want the agents to drop their book. So, I'll shoot the agents again with one of my standard attacks. I'm still in range. Uh, it does one damage and removes them. Uh, we do have a discussion about Eye in the Sky actually here, I believe. Because uh, it's always a thing. Uh, with the agents just dropping their book because they get to choose where the objectives drop rather than me. It's one of their special rules. Obviously, as they die, one of them just throws it off behind him uh, to land on the floor. So, yeah, so that's the agent's gun. Uh, we then do our, our actual second attack into Rogue and we daze her, which I think is probably, again, quite an important thing here. OK, yeah, she's already activated this turn, but it sets me up to be able to do, hopefully, uh, take out next turn on either Rogue or Taskmaster or maybe both if we're really lucky. My opponent spends a little bit of time here trying to decide what he wants to do. Uh, initially, we discuss about Taskmaster going and grabbing that objective, then throwing a shield. We decide, given the that actually he doesn't want to do that, uh, and he, he sort of we, we allow him to backtrack because, frankly, it's a friendly game, isn't it? It doesn't matter too much. Uh, Taskmaster is going to move to Hulkbuster and use his spender on Hulkbuster, and he does three damage into Hulkbuster. I don't believe I had the power at this point to spend it to reduce. So I'm going to activate Hulkbuster now. And I'm going to hit and run. And I'm going to Helios laser Nick Fury. There is a discussion here about should he play Eye in the Sky. He chooses not to. I throw a 15 dice Helios laser into Fury. Because Hulkbuster's got a bunch of power. And obviously other people have got various bits of power from Rocket, especially where he's been chipping people off damage here and there. Had quite a bit of power on him. So 
we only managed four damage into into uh, fury unfortunately but then we move get the move on that hit and run and we are actually within one of that spider portal we're then going to heavy repulsor blast war machine uh, we don't do any damage but crucially we get the push so we push him backwards out of the way of the portal and then we flip that portal by spending a power so i'm pretty happy with that the hulk buster's turn nice bit of control uh, sort of great little uh little play there didn't do again did enough damage to worry fury and get him considering his position uh, see we've still got star lord and hawkeye and war machine and winter soldier to go so war machine's going to go next he moves and tries to flip the portal but rolls a skull so i tell him to go away down towards the bottom of the screen as you see just there he's then going to use metal storm Hulkbuster is going to spend one to reduce the damage. And all said and told, we end up with just the one damage into Hulkbuster and bleed. So I'm going to go Winter Soldier next before Winter Soldier gets killed. Uh, he does choose to target Fury and Fury chooses to spend for Eye in the Sky. So we redirect into Taskmaster, do one damage and bleed. Taskmaster uses the shield leadership to move towards Bucky. Rocket in retaliation uses booby traps and does one damage to Taskmaster. Taskmaster then uses photographic reflexes and does nothing to Bucky. So yeah, there's a lot of counter counter to the counter to the counter right there. Uh, so Winter Soldier's then going to do no damage on his shot into Taskmaster, like the follow-up shot. Uh, the second assault rifle shot um, does not. Oh, sorry. The second assault rifle shot does nothing, and uh, photographic reflexes come into play again, and Bucky becomes dazed. Which you know, okay, it reduces my damage output for this turn, but my opponent only has Hawkeye left to activate, so I'm kind of okay with that, and it brings Bucky online for next turn with a bit of power. So Hawkeye is going to move. And he's going to shoot at Star Lord with a trick shot. So he just moves there, stays at like the end of his five. He does debate whether or not he throws something into, say, like Groot, but in the end opts for, well, I still haven't activated Star Lord. Let's try and do something to Star Lord. So he pops, pops a shot in, does no damage, but puts the slow condition on Star Lord, which is probably reasonably important. It should be noted Star-Lord only has his one power from the start of the turn because he hasn't taken any damage. So Star-Lord is actually just going to move during his activation. So he ends up on top of this Daily Bugle stand because he's got fly. I went to move him around the edge and then remembered why not throw him on top and then shake slow with his second move. So at the end of that turn, uh, the Guardians score four. So we have three of the Spider Portal objectives, not the one towards my opponent's deployment zone, but the other three, and I have one of the Montessi books. That takes me up to seven points. My opponent only scores two. He's got that objective in his home deployment, and he has a Montessi book on one of his characters. So that makes it seven, six going into turn three. So start of turn three, and Rogue has quite a bit of power because I've dazed her after she's acted. So she is going to charge into a Southern Hospitality against Hulkbuster. Now I'm going to play uh, the reduce damage by one. Oh no, sorry, I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to take the damage, but it only is one damage. I'm then going to use Indomitable to stop the throw off Southern Hospitality so that Hulkbuster doesn't just die a horrible, horrible death. Or at least, you know, close to a horrible, horrible death. Uh, does a, buys a second Southern Hospitality, so I choose to reduce damage by one. I only take one damage. I get thrown into the digger. Uh, again, take a little bit of damage. And then Rogue uses Patch Up on Fury, which I believe means he's only on one damage now. So Hulkbuster is going to go next. He's going to Eye Up Rogue. You know, she's activated. Let's try and see if we can get her off the board this turn. So he's going to hit and run 
and then do a heavy repulsor blast. It should be noted he also only has one health here, so he chooses with his second action to shake the bleed that he currently has. He's then going to pick up the cement mixer and smack Taskmaster over the head with it. After we've moved, sorry, from the hit and run. There you go. And we're going to pick up that, that cement mixer that's just behind him and smack Taskmaster over the head, uh, which forces my opponent to spend his brace, which is fine. I'll take that. Again, a bit of reduction in power. War Machine's going to go again. Or go now, I should say. He is going to try and flip this portal after he moves. He's going to move to there, and then he's going to try and flip this spider portal, which he does succeed in this time. Um, and he's then going to move again, but realise once he gets there, he's flipped a portal and doesn't have enough energy to pick up that Montessi book in the middle. So Winter Soldier's going to go. He is going to use... Hydra Tactics, because he's within range of Hulkbuster. Plonk himself just there, just the other side of Taskmaster. He's going to spend to a Red Fury Taskmaster, who is then eye in the sky away, which unfortunately does move just far enough with Iron Sky to get out of Winter Soldier being able to hit him. So in the end, we decide, you know what, fine, I will shoot Rogue. She's only got three health left. Let's try and spike some damage. So we get the first shot, which does one damage and bleed, and gets the rapid fire trigger. We then do two damage on that follow-up, and we KO Rogue. Now, it should be noted here, for anyone who's aware of the shield leadership ability, because shield are currently below my points, they then instantly score a point. So that's going to be an extra point for the end of the turn. So that will put them currently seven all, basically. Um, so. Fury's then going to go. He's going to call in his agents after he moves. Sorry, so he's going to move forward first. And he's going to call in his agents who pick up that Montessi book that's between him. He's in that like trifecta of, of shield characters right there with Hawkeye and War Machine, the agents, and Nick Fury. Uh, he's then going to use Fury Special onto the Hulkbuster, doing one damage. Not a lot, but enough. It's Hulk. Buster has only got the one health left, and this then removes Hulkbuster, obviously, but drops me in the little baby Iron Man. So he's then going to use, oh, sorry, Winter Soldier's then going to use Got Your Back Against Fury, which does one damage and bleed, and gets the rapid fire trigger off, which will then do another damage. So we've just, you know, for, okay, it cost me three power, but I did just get two damage and a bleed out of activation and generated two power on Winter Soldier. So I'm quite happy with that. Again, this is one of the reasons Winter Soldier's such a good model, especially in, like, like I said, a more wide Guardians list. So that actually then makes it my turn, because that was Fury's turn, despite Winter Soldier doing all that stuff. Uh, Rocket's going to go. Uh, he is going to shoot Mr. Fury, because he's right there. Iron the Sky has been used already, and we'll just straight up daze him. Which, which, you know, I'm happy with. It means he's able to be killed potentially next turn, depending on how the dice fall. We then also shoot the agents and we daze them, well, KO them as well. Again, the book they were just holding drops behind War Machine, as you can see on the screen. So Hawkeye is going to go next. He is going to take a look at Iron Man. And he is going to shoot Iron Man with his nice long range 5 attack. And uh, he will actually do three damage, which I was I was a little bit surprised about. Uh, so I'm then going to use Tony's ability to then back away from an attack after he's taken the damage. So Hawkeye then spends to place himself within three with his sort of little grapple grapple arrows, and he is then going to take another shot at Tony because Tony I think has only got four health in this particular was it five health maybe five health. Either way, going to try and get rid of Tony because he doesn't want me to have that extra character on the board. And he does, uh, doing me the two damage and KOing Tony. I don't believe... Actually, I think I probably did have the power, to be honest, on Winter Soldier at this point and then just completely forgot to use it. Or I might not. I can't tell Winter Soldier's card is off the screen. But I didn't use the attack, so I'm going to assume I didn't have the power to do it after that sort of wasted Red Fury on Taskmaster. Um, but Groot's going to go next. 
he is going to heal himself. He's then going to punch Taskmaster. Uh, and he does just the, just, just the one damage uh, in the initial one. And then Taskmaster does the photographic... I've written photographic punch back now, but that's not what it's called. But he does two damage. He does more damage to Groot than Groot did to him by hitting him. Uh, so then Groot's going to use his spender. Uh, and he just... He rolls atrociously. Like, I, I don't know quite what he was doing here. But it certainly wasn't work. Uh, but it does no... So it does no damage into in, into our friend Taskmaster. But I throw him into Hawkeye. Which uh, I quite enjoyed. Especially because it then caused Hawkeye to take two damage. And it does stagger Taskmaster, which is kind of important. Especially because it's now Taskmaster's turn. So Taskmaster is then forced to shake the stagger. He's then going to make an attack into Bucky uh, with a th with a shield throw, and he just does the one damage. Doesn't doesn't manage to do much at all, uh, but does one damage and doesn't get the ricochet. So doesn't hit off into one of my other characters like Groot, which he probably would have liked, but unfortunately that's the way it is. And then I've just got. Star Lord to go. So I'm going to double move Star Lord behind War Machine to pick up that book. Now, my choice is here with the book, the Montessi formula, or the Spider Portal at the back. I chose the book as a guaranteed point rather than the Spider Portal, which isn't. Right, so that leaves us on that turn with 11 points for the Guardians. So that's two of the Montessi formula books and two objectives. So the one that's hiding behind that Daily Bugle stand at the top of the screen that you're never going to see, and the one that's sort of just off my deployment zone. And I have two of the Montessi formula books, one on Star-Lord and one on Groot. My opponent scored four this turn, so they scored one Montessi formula book. Uh, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head who it's on at the moment. I kind of lost track of that. Uh, but he does also have two objectives, so the one towards his deployment zone and the one at the bottom towards the camera. And they scored one point because he was on less points than me when I KO'd Rogue. So let's go into turn four. Opponent still has priority, and he's going to go with Hawkeye. Hawkeye's the one that's got the Montessi formula book. There we go. Why well, I remember. So he's going to make a six dice shot with the book into Winter Soldier. Uh, he is unfortunately not going to do any damage against Winter Soldier, uh, even with that six die. He does then... Do, uh, sorry, Winter Soldier takes two damage, sorry, from the Montessi book. He's then going to shoot Winter Soldier with his bow. There we go, as his second attack. And he's going to do two no damage that time. So he will, however, you get to deal out the, the shock special effect status effect. So we do have a quick discussion actually here about what status effect would be best. And then we go with, with shock of the ones that he has the choice of, because shock lowers my my dice during attacks like by one die so actually you know it does some damage it does some mitigation for the damage that winter soldier can do given across four attacks actually minus in one die is not bad really is it he's then going to do a battlefield medicine on taskmaster just to heal taskmaster up a little bit for anyone who's not in the know battlefield medicine is basically shield med pack i believe it also heals a condition so Bucky's going to go next. He is going to shoot Nicholas Fury, seen Junior, and try. He's only got again. He's only got these three, three dice. But he just wants to get perhaps spread a little bit of condition damage and standard damage around. So he doesn't do any actual damage to Fury, unfortunately, because Fury blocks it. But he does make Fury bleed, and uh, he doesn't get the rapid fire trigger, fortunately. So. In the end, we decide, fine, we will shoot Taskmaster. And we do two damage to Taskmaster, who then does his photographic punch back and does one damage. We do get the rapid fire trigger into Taskmaster, which is much more important, and does, again, one damage. Taskmaster, once more, does his I'm going to hit you back thing and does nothing on the second retaliation. So, not two amazing opening activations for turn four of the game but taskmaster is going to go next he is going to hit winter soldier before i think before he gets dazed i think is the idea here so we still actually are we might still be on winter soldiers one million attacks um but essentially taskmaster is going to oh no we Taskmaster is going to attack Winter Soldier. Does no damage. Second attack does no damage. Groot's going to walk up and there are four characters stood there. So he's going to open his spell book 
and uh, Hadouken them with his with his six dice energy attack, which they're not going to like. Fury, however, <laughs> will iron the sky this because he wants no part of this, and he slides between Groot's legs and ends up the other side of him. So just getting the the measurement, just trying to make sure. Trying to decide where to go, but in the end, decides, you know, we'll go there. Should be noted, I am within two of Rocket. We again now we have a bit of a discussion here about the sh ability that Hawkeye has where he can shoot me back. We went in the end after a little bit of discussion here back and forth was because it involves me targeting Hawkeye, I could target the other two characters first, then have Hawkeye shoot me, so I can target Hawkeye third because Hawkeye's going to try and apply a shock to me. So, what we do then is we Use Taskmaster, we do it to Taskmaster, and we KO Taskmaster, which does, as discussed earlier with Rogue, gets my opponent a VP. So that puts him up to 11. So 11 11 should be worth noting now. But Taskmaster is KO'd. We're then going to do the beam into War Machine, doing three damage. So, you know, that's, I'm quite happy with that. That's a KO of a character who admittedly has already activated this turn. But three damage into War Machine, quite nice. Although it does give him some power, which is a little bit unfortunate. We then daze Hawkeye, and we put Root on Nick Fury. So quite happy with that for a turn. War Machine's going to go next. Uh, sorry, no, he's not. He's going to move towards Groot due to the shield leadership. Although maybe he should only have scored the one point with that shield. We'll have to check that shield leadership. So War Machine will then beam Groot and Winter Soldier. He does discuss beaming Groot and Rocket, but then realises Rocket will just palm the damage off onto Groot. So he does two damage to Groot and does nothing to Winter Soldier, unfortunately. He's then going to use his Great Big Spender attack to fire off a bunch of metal at Star-Lord, who's sort of actually closer to my opponent's table edge than any of my opponent's models right now. Uh, Star Lord, however, uh, does take it. Just takes a little bit of damage, but this is the first time he's actually been damaged all game, so he takes two damage, and that's it. You know, he's he's still got a good chunk of health left, um, and my opponent. Well, we're both sort of starting to run a little bit low on models right now, so I'm just checking some measurements with Star Lord. Is he in range to shoot Fury? Uh, but in the end, I decide. You know what? We're going to uh, use Rocket to Hadron Enforcer Nick Fury because he's right there, and I've got enough power to do it. So we do a Hadron Enforcer. Unfortunately, we roll absolutely atrociously. Again, these Duff Energy Cells clearly locked into the gun. And we do one damage. Okay, fine. We will do second standard attack into Fury and do one damage. So I think Fury's got like, he's, he must have like one health left at the moment, I want to say. Uh, but Fury's going to go next. He's going to Tactical Knife Winter Soldier, KO Winter Soldier. He's going to call in the agents. Who are going to pick up this book next to Star Lord? Trixie agents that they are. He's then going to lead from the front into Groot. Now, he's only got one health here. So he's trying to do loads more damage to me and take out my characters rather than shake the bleed. I'm not sure if that's the right choice personally. I think I would have shook the bleed, but then I suppose Star Lord could have just, you know, shot some people. So he does no damage, especially into Groot, which is not that great. The agents then shoot Groot. They also do no damage. Oh, no, sorry. They're Daze Groot. Sorry. They're Agents Daze Groot, of course. Uh, Fury picks up the book that the that Groot was holding. Um, yeah. Sorry. He must have two health left at this point, Fury, because uh, he will take a damage from the bleed, but he doesn't drop. And he was healed earlier, wasn't he? So who knows how much health he's got right now. So star going to go. He's going to hit and run. Uh, he's going to shoot the agents with the element gun and does five damage. Blah, they're gone. Drop a book. Uh, he's then going to move so that he can shoot Fury. And he's going to do full auto into Fury, doing three damage and slow, which this leaves him on one health. There you go. That's what I'd, uh, I'd forgotten about. So Fury's now on one health. He's taken an element gun. For, sorry, a run and gun, was it? full auto even from star lord and a spender hadron enforcer from rocket and a plasma rifle from rocket how is this guy still alive either way we score some points 
Uh, I we're both up to fourteen now. It's it's absolutely crazy. We both get three points. We both have two objectives and one of the Montessi books. So it is fourteen fourteen going into turn five. This is going to be a close one. Quick turn five. Fury's going to go next first, not next. He's going to activate first during this turn. He is going to tactically knife Groot. Uh, he does do three damage. Groot's not super happy about that, uh, but Groot will have to take it. Um, he's then going to call in the agents. Now, this is the turn where I wonder why didn't he shake the bleed and force me to attack Fury. But in come the agents. They're going to pick up that Montesi, Montesi book again in that sort of triangle of uh, of people in the middle there. We're then going to lead from the front and target Groot. So he does one damage. The agents will shoot Groot. They do no damage. And Fury dies to bleed. So that then obviously causes the agents to drop their book. My opponent here was talking about, well, actually, it gives him a possible chance to reposition the book and gave him a chance potentially to take out Groot. I don't know if it's the best call. In hindsight, it isn't, I don't think. But I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something about sort of the way that interaction or maybe the planning process. But Groot's going to go first. You can use We Are Groot to heal himself and Star-Lord. Rocket has taken no damage and does not care. Uh, Groot's then going to heal himself. So he's basically back to full health. He's then going to punch War Machine with his standard attack and do absolutely nothing. He's then going to punch War Machine a second time and do three damage. It's all or nothing with Groot. And that three damage will actually daze War Machine. Should be noted, actually, all three of my models have the tokens right now. So the winging it tokens. So it means there's a lot of option to spike high, potentially. But it means my opponent only has Hawkeye left to go so hawkeye is gonna activate now before he dies a horrible horrible death and he is going to shoot star lord and do no damage but he does inflict slow again probably quite important shoots him a second time does one damage and causes him to bleed he will then place himself three uh, behind war machine with his little grapple arrow and he will pick up that Montessi formula book. He will then shield mobile to move long. I hate the fact they can do this with objectives. Maybe it needs an errata. Maybe it doesn't. Someone else can decide that. But he's a coward. Either way, off he goes. So Rocket is going to pick up the book that's near him, which was from Fury, which I placed behind Rocket. He is then going to double move to this spider portal towards the camera. And he is going to try and flip it, but he doesn't do it. Uh, Star Lord is just going to move to flip this portal after after he shakes slow. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but I'll just do it for sensible. Sort of, you know, makes sense to good habits. That was the phrase I was after. So that actually ends the game. Guardians score three objectives and two of the Montessi formula books, taking us to 19 points, and the shield. Agents only score two, uh, one Montessi book on Hawkeye and the objective back in their home deployment zone for 16. So that's a, a pretty ground out win, I think, there for the Guardians. Uh, I'm interested to actually play a bit more Guardians of late. Uh, I actually played a game last night at Club Against Guardians, which is filmed. In fact, a couple of games against Guardians, which is filmed, which will be coming at some point later uh, in the next month or two they were using and i know this is again this is a big thing that's coming around at the moment ebony moore with the space gem oh that man is um, just horrific to deal with uh, but you'll see that in the videos that i put up when i get around to editing those and putting those up but i've got a few other videos in the queue at the moment so they might be um, at some point in the next month but i also have an event next weekend so i can't guarantee that i'll get much editing done over that weekend but I am looking forward to bringing A-Force again to an event. 
Hopefully it'll be a four rounder, might be a three rounder, but we're going to have food afterwards. Should be a good laugh. So thank you very much for watching and see you again next time.